Hi birds on an Exmoor shoot and we're not talking expensive pheasants and partridges. I'm out with the kings of Corvid. The thousand year old hunting forest. Our cameraman Carlos Caribia looks for William the Conqueror's bucks. Forget Doctor Who, when it comes to getting a medical check for your new UK shotgun certificate, it's Doctor How Much? Ben O'Rourke finds out what we can do. What semi-auto do you shoot? The Field Sports Channel viewers have spoken and we can reveal all from our super lockdown survey. Plus we have news, we have hunting YouTube and we have a few extra goodies including the chance to win a day's shooting. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. You normally come to Exmoor to shoot high pheasants. Today it's a high pest control day up on the moor with crow specialists Matt Turley and big Nigel White. Today we're here on Exmoor, a little village called Luxborough. Uh, we've got a field of cut barley but they've moved off of this field now and they're, they're landing in on a field of beans that's yet to be harvested. So we're just intercepting these on the flight line going to the beans. Well, he, he shot a high one yes, last week with a, with a 20 blind. I mean, it was I. I had a chance to pick my phone up, switch it on, put it on camera and actually video it coming down. But yeah, it was up there. Because people come to this part of the world for the, the tall pheasants. You just don't think of coming here for the tall pigeons really, do you? No, no, I mean, it, we, do, we do have some fun. They do grow quite a bit of barley up here. Obviously the sheep farming is big business up here, so they grow the barley for sheep food through the winter. These stubble fields will now get planted up with stubble turnips, which will provide winter fodder for the sheep. There's not hundreds and hundreds of acres up here, but there is, there is a crop up here, and of course the pigeons find it easy food. With all the rain that we've had, this field a week ago was flat on the ground and they were really hammering it. We're in the hide for an 11am start, expecting the bulk of the birds in the afternoon. We get the main lot come in the morning. So Nigel, what's, what do you reckon's wrong with the pattern? I don't know, they, they, they tend to be coming in all of a sudden they just almost get there and then just turn off, so it could have been one of the, the early birds <coughs> on their back. It could be just um, they're seeing something that's not quite right, we don't know yet. My match is going to have a check now, um, put a pigeon on the flapper. Um, just to encourage them in. Um, we'll see if it makes a difference. It's as simple as that. Well, they're doing something right. Squirt off. They decoy better when he's out there than what they do when he's in here. <laughs> You're a better decoy than the bloody. Yeah. They're never trying to land on your record. And wait for them to get over here, aren't you worried? Um, we can't pick the birds up in the, the standing beans, obviously. Um, the farmer doesn't want us running around in there or letting the dogs in there because we'll do more damage than the birds are doing. So it's just easier for us to pick them up off of the stubble. I mean, do you worry about things like, you know, am I being legal? Uh, I think, you know, in this modern day and age, we've got to got to err on caution. You know, if the law states that we have to provide that we're doing something, then we've got to be seen to be doing it. Um, have you got uh, photographic evidence of these scarecrows you put up over the last few days to mm -hmm. keep the uh, birds off? Yes, we have, yeah. No, really? <laughs> yeah. Mom was on his way to Bucks. Bucks is that way. Yeah, but he was going. <laughs> <laughs> he was going around that way. Now, you will notice that both Matt and Nigel are making a schoolboy error here. So, Carl, I just want to ask you about um, uh, ears, lack, lack of um, hearing protection today. Sorry? Because they will, exactly. Because <laughs> they will ask you. Um, are there just days you don't bother and days you do? And what, how do you do it? If I'm honest, um, as a youngster, I wasn't too keen on, on uh, ear protection. Um, I've worked with every machinery for the past 40 odd years, um, shooting on a weekly basis. Um, and I think it's too late for me now, if I'm honest. Um, I've, tried, I've tried the earplugs and um, defenders and I find them uncomfortable, if I'm honest. Um, 
but if I've got the young ones out with me, I make sure they put them on all the time. Um, I've got a pair in the motor now, which are Jack Pike ones. But if I'm honest, I don't wear them. Matt? I'm exactly the same. I've been shooting now, uh, I've been shooting 35 years, and I've never worn them. And my hearing has gone past being any good now. Um, I wish I had worn them as a youngster. Uh, I do struggle on some days if the wind's in the wrong direction. I do really struggle to hear birds. Um, but same as Nigel, I do find them uncomfortable to wear. But like I said, I wish I had worn them from a younger age because I am regretting it now. So I'd certainly advise anybody taking up shooting now you know, to, to get and invest in a decent pair of ear defenders because you've only got one lot of hearing and once it's gone, it's gone. Oh, You're side. worse than me, you let the side down again. As the day comes to an end, it's clear that you come here for quality of pigeons and corvids, not quantity. Difficult day today. Uh, the flight line that was here has dried up. Obviously they found somewhere else they would rather be. Um, we have given them quite a bit of pressure over the past couple of weeks. I think now they have seen most of what uh, we have to offer them and they are uh, avoiding us. I mean, these birds that are coming to this field here, they're probably roosting you know, several miles away from here, um, which doesn't make this job very easy. We end on just 16 picked. Um, we shot a bag of 70 last week up here. Uh, we did do 181, which was a mixture of crows and pigeons the week before. Um, crows in particular are a big problem up here on Exmoor. Not a lot of people do anything with the crows. So they've been fairly easy to decoy. Uh, we did just over 503 outings here for one of the large pheasant shoots where they were coming in onto cover crop ground where the keepers were trail feeding the pheasants. There it is, more than just screaming pheasants on Exmoor, you get tall pigeons and rooks with ice on them too. Thank you, Matt and Nigel. Now in the world of pigeon shooting this week, one video on social media stood out. It's the wonderful moment that Jay Woodcock, using his 410, took his first shot on a pigeon. Get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Go. Yes! First bird, first shot. <laughs> Amazing moment, brilliantly captured on a camera by proud dad Sean Woodcock. Of course, a few people on Facebook have pointed out the gun safety moment. It wouldn't be Facebook if they didn't. But you can't take away from Jay the most amazing experience. It will live with him for the rest of his life. Now, someone who seems to be living with me for the rest of my life, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Sabs in Northamptonshire have accused a local hunt of trampling one of their members. Northant's hunt saboteurs claim an animal rights activist was badly injured on Saturday while sabbing a cub hunt meat in the Pytchley country. It said there were reports that the riders used their horses as weapons, knocking the man to the ground and injuring six ribs, his collarbone, shoulder and partially collapsing a lung. A web service has shut down innocentbadger.com. Stop the Cull says the international domain name registrar disabled the domain name, forcing the group to change to a registrar in Iceland, where the rules are different. The terms of service violation relates to its publishing three and a half years ago, the addresses and phone numbers of Conservative Party politicians who support Badger Culls. This also comes just weeks after STC released personal information of people involved in Badger Culls, including addresses, phone numbers and emails. Police say they're investigating. The new BBC anti-impartiality pledge won't affect Chris Packham. Incoming Director-General Tim Davey said last week that BBC employees need to curb their social media rants if they want to keep their jobs. After the Countryside Alliance pointed the finger at Packham, sources in the BBC said that the DG meant only journalists in news and current affairs. Packham is also a freelancer, so may be exempt. If the BBC follows through with its new policy, Gary Doolan from Basque says Packham's stepdaughter, Megan McCubbin, could be affected. 
Even as we speak, she has a bio on Twitter that says she's a BBC presenter on Springwatch. Um, but she's also uh, an ambassador for the League Against Cruel Sports, which we obviously claim is, a, is an extremist organisation with extreme anti-shooting views. So that's, that's a dilemma also. Some of Scotland's most endangered birds are thriving in the Cairngorms. Gamekeepers on the Invercold estate spent three months in spring and summer monitoring nesting birds, the press and journal reports. They recorded an increase in sightings of 37 species classified as red and amber and overall 1,117 pairs from under threat birds, 16% more than last year. These included dotterel, curlew, ring ousel and merlin. Estate manager Angus McNichol says the survey shows how important land management for red grouse is for endangered birds. There's more good news south of the border where 60 hen harrier chicks have fledged, the most since 2002. Natural England says the chicks came from 19 nests in Northumberland, the Yorkshire Dales, Cumbria and Lancashire in early summer 2020. The government agency puts the success down to good weather and cooperation from Moorland Association, RSPB, Forestry Commission, the National Trust and others. Natural England chairman Tony Juniper hailed cooperation between all parties but couldn't resist suggesting the birds were under threat from persecution by gamekeepers. Twelve of the nests are on land managed for grouse shooting. New restrictions on the number of people allowed to socially gather come into England on Monday the 14th of September. This won't affect shooting, however Basque is making sure. The English government has restricted gatherings to six, but it's exempted organised sporting activities. Basque is making sure that includes shooting. We're looking closely at the detail. We've sent our existing Covid safe guidance to government to demonstrate that the sector is responsible and operating safely and we will update our members and the shooting community when we have further clarity on what the new restrictions are going to mean. Pheasant and partridge releases are down a quarter this year. That's the experience of specialist poultry vet St David's, which looks after birds on shoots all over the country. So Scotland looks to be sort of 15 to 20% down. Um, if we work down to sort of Exmoor and Sussex areas, they're sort of 30 to 40% down. Um, but then they had to sort of make the decisions earlier because they are put the birds down earlier. So yeah, but overall 25% down. Game farms are reporting some birds left over and Kenny has been working with them on what to do with the excess stock. He says the problem is producing a green dividend. You get some cancellations every year. Uh, this year, probably a little few more cancellations. Um, and some people would rear birds excessively in order to see if there's anything at the end of the market. Um, so yes, there is some excess. There's a few excess pheasants left and obviously partridges are still going out uh, as, as a lot of people are shooting a lot later this year. Um, so I am having a few game farmers saying, look, I can't sell these. What, what do you think I should do with them? Uh, and we're talking about breeding stocks, um, looking about more self-sufficiency, um, less issues in terms of importing if there is any issues in the, in the future, although there wasn't any this year. So yeah, it's looking at self-sufficiency, looking at high health status, flocks, mycoplasma-free flocks, let's overwinter them uh, and kind of become self-sufficient self -sufficient really. The government has been accused of a lack of impartiality in a row over fur. According to the Daily Telegraph, Animal Welfare Minister Lord Goldsmith plans to speak at an event called No Business in Fur, organised by Humane Society International on the 15th of September. This prompted a formal complaint from the British Fur Association. The HSI wants a fur ban, but the BFA claims it would cost the economy £200 million and accuses the government of bias against fur firms. Seagulls don't like being stared at, so will fly away if they catch you looking at them. That's according to researchers at the University of Exeter. They claim they could get up to two metres closer to the gulls when they were looking somewhere else. The study also found urban gulls are bolder than rural gulls, some of them even walking away instead of flying. Rural gulls are three times more likely to fly away than walk. Researchers conducted the study in Cornwall with 155 gulls. The parliamentary petition against the Canadian government's gun ban has become the biggest in the country's history. The petition was in response to the decision by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's administration to ban 1,500 types of rifles in May, and it closed with 230,905 signatures. It says Trudeau's firearms confiscation regime was undemocratically imposed without debate and is an assault on Canadian democracy. The ban gives owners of prohibited weapons two years to surrender them. Critics point out that the ban includes firearms with bore 20 millimetres or greater, which makes some 12-gauge shotguns illegal. 
Two influential bloggers have changed their minds and other people's minds about shooting sports in the last month. Comedian and vegan blogger Ryan Dalton produces the Into the Wild podcast. He talks to Namibian wildlife officials in a recent post and now announces he's in favour of trophy hunting, though he wouldn't do it himself. Meanwhile, a US vlogger called Stephen Crowder takes anti-gun students to a shooting range where they change their minds. Living with elephants is no easy matter. Conservation group the True Green Alliance highlights the dangers in a video on Facebook of what it said is the kind of thing some Africans have to deal with. It shows a man knocked off his bicycle and the elephant harassing him, even picking up the bike with its trunk and smashing it onto his head. Reports from Tanzania say a herd of elephants invaded farms in the south on Saturday morning, killing a farmer and destroying crops. Officials in Tunduru district said the 52-year-old farmer was attacked when he tried to chase the elephants away, according to South Africa's independent online news website. And finally, Extinction Rebellion has notched up a few questionable achievements since it formed a few years ago. Now you can add bad spelling to the list, as graffiti on this hut on a grouse moor in the North York Moors shows. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. So do you want to win a rather special day's shooting? Our friends at Jack Pike have the details. Thank you, Jack Pike, and follow those instructions on how to enter that competition. Now, we did all shotguns a few weeks ago, so let's start to break it down a bit. Here are the results of our lockdown survey on semi-autos. What semi-autos do the Field Sports Channel audience prefer? We sent out surveys in March 2020, and more than 3,500 of you filled out the questionnaires. It's as if you had nothing better to do. Of those, nearly 500 semi-auto owners responded, and what do they tell us? Well, a few short stats for starters. More than half of you own one of just 10 semi-auto models, and 90% of you own semi-autos by eight gun makers, so it's a tight choice. Half of you bought your semi-auto within the last five years. Half of you spent less than £500 on your semi-auto. Cheapskates? No, that's because semi-autos are cheap. Now the results, and I will reveal the makers first before I tell you the models. The third most popular manufacturer is Browning. Second place goes to Benelli, which is also the winner for customer service. In the top slot, with more than a quarter of the market, it's Beretta. How about your favourite guns? We asked you to give them star ratings, and these are the results. The prize for value for money goes to the Armsan A612. One gun cleans up all the rest of the star ratings. According to our viewers, the winner for fit, for pointability, for looks and for reliability is the Browning Maxus. In a market of notably young guns, the prize for long service goes to the Remington Model 1100, which is unusual in that more than a third of you who own one have had yours for more than 20 years. And now the big one. What are the most popular semi-auto models? In third place, it's the Beretta A400 series. Second place goes to that clearly much-loved Browning Maxus. And the most popular semi-auto among our viewers is from Turkey, the Hatsan Escort with 10% of the market all by itself. Tuzu Kuru, which in Turkish means doing nicely. 
Now it's been a weekend of fishing festivals and I have a couple of shout outs for festivals this year that will be in the calendar next year. So if you miss them, look out for them. Our Fishing Britain presenter Martin Salter is one of the organisers of the angling elements of the Thames Tide Fest, which took place in and around London at the weekend and includes introducing kids to fishing. If you want to find out about future events, visit thamestidefest.net. Also underway at the weekend was the Orvis Saltwater Fly Fishing Festival this year held on the south coast in Chichester Harbour. Here's Claire Zambuni talking to Orvis UK boss Adrian Wolford on the beach. What have you been doing over the weekend? Oh, I actually went out on a boat yesterday, which yeah. was really great, around the harbour um, uh, with Paul, Salty Dog, for those of you that know him. And that was that was an experience. We didn't catch any fish, but, um, <laughs> was, but we had a really nice time on the water. The weather's been glorious, so it's been fantastic. More on their future events at orvis.co.uk. Next, Ben O'Rourke investigates the new stealth taxes that are shotgun and firearm certificates, medical checks. Helen Benson likes helping people. As chief executive of the Gamekeepers Welfare Trust, that's all she does. Here she's raising money for the hospital in Middlesbrough where her husband was treated after a heart attack on the moors. He was saved by a gamekeeper. Um, just, just on the next door estate, collapsed. He was saved by somebody who had done first aid, did CPR on him and he had a triple bypass. So this is just to raise funds and awareness to the hospital and the heart ward where he was. Managing the helpline at the Trust, Helen deals with people with problems every day. It's some of the stories they don't tell that disturb her the most. The situation with the firearms, this, it's so misunderstood from the general public that it's a tool that the gamekeepers use for their work. But it is increasingly difficult because the doctors have to sign off for the certificates. And so gamekeepers are increasingly wary of approaching a doctor for whatever it is that is wrong with them, whether it's mental health or whether it's physical health even. And certainly I went to the funeral of one gamekeeper last year who died because he didn't go to the doctor soon enough and it was an issue that could have been controlled. It was prostate cancer, but he didn't go to the doctor because he was frightened of having his guns taken away. And if you have your guns taken away, you lose your job and your home. It's not just gamekeepers. Pest controller Tim Newcomb, seen here launching a boat, was denied a firearm certificate for rifles and a shotgun certificate five years ago. He says he gave police a letter from a doctor who did not object to him shooting, but said he was prone to anxiety and taking medicine for it. I had three farmers, and they're all perfect. I even have a school field where I shoot as well. My friend, though, he got here straight away. He, he had this within a month. You know, 12 months later, I was still fighting mine. And it just kept getting passed on through different departments, and in the end, it was, no, you're your danger to public health and safety. So, oh, thanks, mate. Nice one. Tim feels the police firearms officer judged him before she met him. He says she then told one of his farmer clients that he is mental and asked whether they wanted someone like that running around their land with a gun. I can understand they've got to do a job, but a police officer is not trained to judge you on your mental health. West Yorkshire Police took the guns from Barry Swain, a Leeds pest controller we have featured before. Animal rights extremists campaigning to stop him shooting accused him of mental problems and selling the goose meat to Chinese restaurants without presenting any evidence. The person in charge of the case at WYP believed the claims and made others, seemingly siding with the extremists to stop Barry. I've had my licence taken off me for doing pest control. So, who's wrong here? The government gave me the licence through the police to do pest control and the police are stopping me from doing pest control and it's fully legal and lawful. And they've also took my guns off me because I was doing pest control and I refused to stop doing pest control. Barry's story began earlier this year with his arrest and detention after aunties complained about him shooting Canada geese that are polluting a farm ruining land meant for grazing cattle. The police don't understand uh, uh, the issues that the farmer has and people like myself have. Uh, they, they tend to think that it's just for fun when they uh, refuse to remove the protesters and refuse to stop them and refuse to um, prevent them uh, doing what they're doing under law. 
It's the law it is, it's section 68, part 1, part 1B, part 1C. They're not allowed to stop us from doing pest control. It's, a, it's an illegal act to stop us. Uh, but the police don't see this. They, they don't recognise it and uh, they refuse to uh, support it. Police now admit arresting Barry was wrong. Following that decision, the sergeant in charge of Barry's case told Field Sports News to stop asking questions. WIP is still pushing a complaint against Barry that is hundreds of pages long. As a dyslexic, a complaint that long is daunting for Barry. So if the police and the protesters win in taking my guns off me for doing pest control, where do we stand? If my guns are removed from me for doing something that I was given a license to do the job in the first place, who's next? You know what I mean? A, a, a processor will ring up and say, you're out there shooting pigeons in a field. I don't like this. Uh, West Yorkshire Police has set a precedent. They will send an officer down and take your guns off you because we don't like you doing shooting pigeons in the field. What, we, what are we supposed to do? Tim's case is looking brighter after he complained to police in Exeter, who said they were shocked to hear how he'd been treated. Soon after, police phoned him and advised him to reapply for his licences. Basque has a scheme to help shooters who are having trouble finding doctors so they can get licences. You can find out more in the link below. Thank you, Ben. If you have had a bad experience with these new medical checks, please get in touch with Ben email address in the description below. And remember, Ben is funded by you, the viewers. You can help us with that by joining the Field Sports Nation on our website, link in the description below. And of course, you get a goodie box if you do. Now, they've been hunting the deer in the New Forest in the south of England for a thousand years. Our cameraman, Carlos, tries an unusual calibre on Roebuck, the 35 millimeter. There's seeing deer, and there's being with deer. This wonderful footage was captured by our Argentinian friend and camera maestro Carlos. After months of lockdown in an essential services bubble, his first taste of freedom coincides with the row rut. So he chooses to visit Elliot Pidgeley of New Forest Stalking to try and get some close-ups of roebucks. For the professional photographer and hunter, today is all about shooting deer with his Canon 7D Mark II, not a rifle. And we ask him to press record, as well as the shutter. There's a good reason he asked Elliot. His ground is bursting with deer, of all different flavours. As it's early in the rut, Elliot has only just blown the dust off his cherry whistle. I've got a cherry wood with me, so we're going to give, uh, give that a few calls. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, with a bit of luck, we can get some nice uh, photos of some roebuck up close and personal. And then I've got the rifle in the back just because there's a couple of roebuck that I want to try and get just before they get too far into the rut and they pass on their genes because they've, uh, they've got a few dodgy antlers on them, some of them. Seeker, Munchak and Roe all make an appearance and Elliot does carry a rifle just in case. The New Forest is an extraordinary place, and if you want to experience it for yourself, drop Elliot a line on the New Forest Stalking Facebook page. Thank you, Carlos. Next up from Hampshire to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. We have two votes this week for the 2019 Netflix film Stars in the Sky, a hunting story by Steve Rinella. This is its trailer on the Meat Eater channel. Thanks to Alexander Laver and Ian Jensen for recommending it. Also inspiring, recommended by Dave Watson on Facebook, this 90-minute film from 2019 is a great sheep hunting outing in Alaska. Well worth watching, he says. I missed this film when it came out. It's rabbit shooting with a 178MR by the Dales Rabbit Controller. I find out some of what's going on in the German hunting YouTube scene from the YachtTube group on Facebook. Gernot Schorkuber used it to recommend his new arthouse buck hunting film. Also in German, the ever popular Hunter Brothers are back with a one hour film about stalking Roebuck in Poland. They're at a smart hunting lodge which gets a good promo in this film and the stalking is good quality too. A speedy one minute film next, a good shot and retrieve on a turtle dove in Spain by local hunter Javier Filter using a 410. For those interested in the pros and cons of Nürburn, here's Parks Canada doing it because it benefits bison. Parks Canada reintroduced bison to Banff National Park in 2017. And finally, thanks to Carlos Blatt from, I think, Brazil, who watched my Flyer Cara film last week. He calls it Yakara and has been doing it for years. That's it for this week. I put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, click to like us on Instagram, on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page on our website, and we'll send you our newsletter about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.